Maybe Bonnie comes to lead singing. Well, we say good evening. Glad you came back tonight. We want to start out with a song, if you will. Turn to uh, hymn number 617. I think we all know this song. 617. Are we ready? Six seventeen. There is a place of quietness near to. Okay, good evening, everyone. Before we start, let me open a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness and loving kindness. Thank you for bringing us back out tonight, Lord. We lift up your holy name. We praise you. I pray you bless this service, and thank you for each one that came out, Lord. We praise you and love you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray, amen. Tonight, I want to speak on something about rejection. It's a hard thing to be rejected. Sometimes we might be in different situations where people, they don't agree with us. Maybe they reject us. But at the same time, we're children of God. We have to march forward. Turn with me, if you will, to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. We'll start reading verse 1. Mark chapter 6. There the Bible says, And he, and that's Jesus, went from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? What wisdom is this which he is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Murray, the brother of James and Joseph, and the brother of, uh, and of Judah and of Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet, catch this now, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. That's sad, isn't it? One second, please. Yeah, I got mixed up here. Okay. And he could... 
uh, could there do no mighty work save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went, uh, went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no money, or their purse. But he shod with sandals, but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into the house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for the testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall not be tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Praise God, and let me pray. Father, as we look at this, Lord, and we consider the fact that even Jesus, in the walk that he had in his day, that he was rejected, and he was rejected by even his own family at times. And so, Lord, I pray, help us to understand that we, no matter what comes our way or what people think of us, we do your work. We praise you and bless you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. When you think about this, you look at Jesus. He went to his own people, people he grew up with, people that he knew, but they did not recognize him as the son of God, and they put him down. How did that make him feel? How did that make his disciples feel? You know what? We could face the very same thing. Why? Because people are people. Not everyone's going to look and see that's a Christian person. He's doing the best he can. He's talking for God. But not everybody will really uphold those even that speak the word. Uh, a lot of your preachers, they have a hard time just because people, they, they really put them down. They step on them, so to speak. But God's not in that because God is for his work being done and all those that work for him. They need to really look up and truly know that he is God. But Jesus, he knew he couldn't do any work there. And when he said that even in his own country, that he was not able to get through or, or do a mighty work there. Look at the work he had done all out and about. When the people, he saved so many groups of people, a lot of people. But in his own country, in his own town, so to speak, they wouldn't have him. That's sad. It really is. But he knew people. He came from God. He knew all about people. He could look into the hearts of people. And that's sad. Because what do you think? How did God look at those people? Because, I mean, here he sent his son. And these people would turn him down. I wonder what, how they ended up in that. You think they ever received totally and completely what God had intended for them? It's very doubtful, isn't it? But Jesus, he knew all about the people that he was dealing with. It didn't stop him, though. You know what? That's the way we need to have an attitude. I'm not going to stop serving God. I don't care who says what. I don't know, I don't know what people are like. But I'm going to walk with God. And folks, we'll do that. God will bless. He may lead us in another direction. He may uh, bring us into an understanding of truly what people are all about. And I thought that was very, very good to read that. Now I'm going to move on to John chapter 7. I've got a few scriptures I want to read in this way. John chapter 7, 1 through 9, if you'd like to turn there. This get, even gets deeper. John 7, starting with verse 1, After these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewelry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of the tabernacle was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou hast done. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he, he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Check this out. 
for neither did his brethren believe in him. Boy, I guess that's right down hurts, don't it? It really does. You, you know what? When we serve God, we like to think that people are standing behind us that are really picking us up, so to speak. But it don't work that way all the time. For neither did his brother believe him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is, already, is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hateth me, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Go ye unto, the fe unto this feast. I go not yet unto the feast, for my time is not yet full. And when he had said these things, words, he, uh, he said unto them, he abode still in Galilee. And when his brethren were gone up and went, he also, uh, he also up into the feast, not opening, not openly, but as it were in secret. Jesus had, he had done all these miracles. He had done great things in the name of the Lord. But a lot of people, they put their foot in his face, so to speak. But he didn't stop him. I think that's a good thought for all of us. You know what? Lynn and I have been in several different churches. You see all kinds of people. Some of them, they'll, they'll put you down. Some of them, they won't agree with you. No matter if you're right or not, they won't agree. But it can't stop us because we are on a mission that the Almighty God has given us, and we have to march forward because we are, we are in the Lord's army, if you want to put it that way. But we have to trust in God. I wish everyone could see it that way. I really do. And let me put something else in on this. I don't care what church you go to. There's only one that owns that church, and that's God. It cannot be in just people saying, this is our church, it's my church, I'll do things the way I want. That is not the way a church operates. It has to be all in the name of the Lord. It has to look to God for strength and direction and guidance for wisdom, and that's what he wants us to do. And I wish every church, I'm not talking about our church, I'm talking about in churches in general that we have seen. I saw one church completely went under. You know why? Because the leadership couldn't get along. Went out of business. Is God in something like that? Surely not, you know, because God wants his church to go forward. He wants his people to come together to agree on serving God. And not fight over the color of the walls or the carpet. That is not, that don't accomplish anything. But God says, do my work. Listen to me. Learn of me in my word. And I'll show you how to live the Christian life. How to operate in the church, in friendship with others, and to do the work that I've given you to do. Let me move on. Go to, if you will, John 12. 48. John 12, 48. I'm going to start back in verse 45 there. And he that seeth me, seeth me that sent me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light in the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I can not, I can not to judge the world but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. You know what? It's so serious how we approach God's word, God's work, and how we treat other people. It's so serious. Sometimes uh, people, they, they can't get along. Everyone wants their own way. There's only one way, and that's God's way. If we don't do things God's way, then where, where are we? And how can we serve him? And what can we look forward to? I would not be the, want to be the one that broke up a church. Because there will be a payday someday for that very thing. And uh, I think there's a lot of churches that went down that road. But to reject, reject what God has done, reject God himself. Folks, that is not the way that God has worked. Because he is, he is over it all. 
He's one that has laid down his word. He's put it into, into action, and he wants us to walk with him. We want, he wants us to trust in him, and that's what he's called us to do. I wish everyone could see that. I like the phrase in, in Isaiah, and this is about Jesus, Isaiah 53. Let me get back there. There the writer says, and it, the title is a suffering servant. Who hath believed our report, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and we, we, we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and inflicted. That is what Jesus went through. That is what he faced. And why? Why is that? Because man will not look to God. They look to their own thoughts. They look to their own desires. How will that turn out for them? As with old saying, his hour is a payday someday. Because all of us, every one of us will stand before the righteous judge of all the earth. And that's Jesus Christ. Because he lived among men. He saw the way men were. He already knew, but he saw and and. He walked with men, and he saw all of this, what they did, even how they treated him. How would we it be to see those people that treated him so badly when they have to stand before him? That's really something to think about. That's something to be concerned about, but not everyone will see things that way. You know what? We live in God's world. He owns it all. He's one that made it. He created it. And he has to be number one. There cannot be those that say, I will run things. I will run this. I'll take care of this. I know all about it. When they really don't. And that's sad. It really is. But God says, come. Let me show you a better way. Jesus said, come, follow me. Follow me and let me teach and, and train you and show you a strong and mighty way that God wants to use you. And that's what he will do if we will a lady. Not everyone will. I thank God that we have a good church here. I thank God that we do believe in what he has said. And that's the only way we can follow him because we can't change his beliefs. We've got to walk with him. We've got to trust in him. In 2 Timothy 3.12, there the Bible says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're going to live for Christ, you're going to have people who are going to come against you. It's a given. Why? Because we're Christians. As Christians, can we expect a perfect world, an environment, where we say everybody just, yes, we just all are the same, we look at things, and we are the same if we know Christ because we're all one in Jesus Christ. But not everyone sees that way. That's sad. I hate that. I really do. But the thing about it is not all people are going to try to get along. And that's, that's really bad. What if God, what if he came and stood among us would we be ashamed? I'm sure there would be situations and times and, and places that we should be ashamed. Why? Because we're not following him always. But he says, let me show you God's way, a great way. And you follow that. And you trust in him. You let him be your guide. One that can, can show you from his word exactly what he desires out of his people. But how many will do that? It's sad. 
I think we do have a good church here. I think we have a lot of good people, and I thank God for that. Uh, let him be our direction, our guide, our strength, our strong foundation. Let him be the one that shows us a better way, a way that will please him and not please ourselves. Uh, not everyone wants to get along. I hate to say it that way, but it's, it's true. They don't. Why? Because we're flesh. We are God's children, but we're still in all. We're flesh. But God says, follow me, listen to me, trust in me. If we'll do that, we'll see his very best. That's what God can do. Now, that's not what man can do. Because, you know, like I said, we're flesh. We're apt to go our own ways many times. Why do we not, everyone, why can't we get along? Because of that flesh. But God says, trust me. Let me show you a stronger and better way. And that's what he will do if we'll let him. But I thank God for, for I, I tell you what, I really thank this group of people that are faithful, that want to do what God wants his church to be like. I thank God for each and every one. We thank God for all of them that come, like on Sunday mornings. But there are those that want to really come into God's house as often as they can and serve God. And I think he'll bless that because we have to grow in God's grace. He gives more grace. He is one that trains us. How would your Christian life be like if he hadn't have trained us? What would we look like just like we did before we knew him? But God says, let me show you from the word of God exactly what I desire out of you, and what I want you to become. We can be useful vessels if we'll only trust him. Now, Jesus' brothers, that was one of the saddest things I believe I've ever read in the Bible, that they didn't believe in him. Why? Because of flesh. Because of flesh. But some of them, even after his death, they started becoming his followers. And that's wonderful. I guess you can say, that all of us, in some way or another, we have hard heads and we can't see things because we're not looking to God. We're not looking up, but we do it our way. And that's, that's sad. That's shame. But God is a merciful God. I love him. I know you do too. And that's what he wants from us. And let me close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this teaching, Lord. It's very sad to read this. How that even your own brothers and maybe sisters too really put you down. And yet, Lord, you had a mission. You were on a mission. You were doing the Father's work. But, Lord, we know for a fact that we have that work also because you have brought us into, into relationship with yourself. You have shown us how we can walk forward in Jesus Christ, that we can learn to get along, that we can learn to to uphold each other, and we can share and love each other in every way. Thank you for all that. We praise you and love you, Father. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.